All right, hello. Uh, so I figured if I was going to advocate for writing games in Go, I should give you a head start on how to write games in Go. Um, we'll start by installing Go and getting SDL to open a window from there. It should be like normal with SDL, anything you want to do in it. Um, so I've got three things here. I'm s I search for GoLand. We're going to just go to the first link to go to the Go programming language. I have VS Code I'm going to install. And we're also going to go to the SDL website because we're going to grab the uh, development libraries from there. So we'll start with Go. And I'm inside of a Windows sandbox, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, and so click on Download and click on the install for the system that you're working with. I'm going to do Windows as it's going to be the hardest one to set up, uh, but not too hard. Linux is actually pretty easy. I've set it up on both. Uh, so. It's pretty easy on, on uh, Linux for sure. So just go through and install all the pieces of this. I'm just going to put that off to the side and start downloading the VS Code. I assume you already have VS Code installed um, if you're interested in Go stuff or if you've been programming in other languages. Uh, VS Code is nice because it has a bunch of built-in plugins made from the developers who make Go, and they work out they work really nice. So, um, otherwise, you can use GoLand from JetBrains if you have one of those JetBrains licenses, and uh, it should work the same. So, inside of Visual Studio uh, Code, I'm just going to hit Finish to get that set up while Go is still installing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a folder. I'm going to call it Go Window on my desktop. Folder name doesn't matter. And I'm going to select this folder. I'm going to say trust that. And I'm going to create a main.go. Set up a package main and then a func main to get things set up here. And notice that I get some pop-ups for installing the plugins. Just hit install on that. You're going to get uh, a couple of them. Fail to find. Oh, I, you probably should wait till Go is finished installing to do these guys. Um, that's fine. I can just uninstall that and we'll reload and we'll wait for uh, this guy to finish installing. Oh, speaking of which, okay, so that's finished and we're going to reopen VS Code because that's going to change um, some of our path variables that we're going to need. Okay, so now if we click on go, we'll go over to the extension, we'll install it. There we go, and it got installed this time without complaining about uh, the other stuff. And you'll see a couple more pop-ups. Just hit install on all three of these and let them install, and you'll be good to go. Now that we have all of those set up, we need to actually get our SDL libraries going. Uh, before that, we need let's set up our, our Go project here um, just so that it's ready and we can just plug in uh, the libraries once we get them set up. On Linux, you're just going to install the SDL libraries the way you always do, and that's all you have to do. And that's like a one-line command. So uh, we're going to open up a terminal here, and we're going to initialize our project. So I believe it's go mod, mod in it, and I'm just going to call it go window. And then I'm just do go mod tidy like it asks me to. And now uh, let me grab what we need for SDL. Okay, so we're just going to import this package here, uh, github.com slash vindco go SDL SDL. You'll see that it turns red. You can press uh, control period and say go get this package. And it's going to go grab that package and uh, get it set up. So we shouldn't build yet because when we use SDL, it's going to have to use the SDL libraries and do some comp uh, compilation stuff. Um, but we're going to start off with uh, if error SDL init. And then we're going to init everything. So SDL, uh, my autocomplete's not working yet. Init everything and then we're going to say er, er is not equal to nil 
and panic. Failed to initialize a window. And we're just putting this here so that when we save, it doesn't delete our import statement there. Okay, uh, so now that we've uh, set that up, I'm going to do tidy again here. And uh, now we need to go get SDL, and then we'll worry about these red squigglies afterwards. So on the SDL page, um, find the releases, and you'll have a bunch of zips here. Um, on Windows, we're looking for the mingw zip, and that's because um, Go is going to compile some code whenever we compile our program for SDL. And in order for it to do that, it needs GCC and some stuff like that. And so obviously it's Windows, so we're not going to have GCC by default. So we're going to have to set up mingw. On Linux, it's not a problem. It just works. So we're going to grab the mingw uh, zip file, and then we need to get mingw. Uh, let me get that set up. Okay, if you go to that GitHub page that is in that import that we had, uh, the vindco go sdl, and then go down to other, uh, on, uh, on Windows, you'll find this mingw builds link. If you go to that, it gives you uh, these releases. And then we're just going to find the release for what we need. Okay, to be honest, I don't remember exactly which one that I used, but let's go with the this one here, x86-64-13-10, release Win32-SEH, uh, Microsoft Visual C Runtime RT, this, yeah, this guy is fine. We'll just grab that one. And then that's going to give you a 7-zip. So if you don't have a way to unzip 7-zip, um, just type in 7-zip uh, and click on that guy. And then we're going to go to download the exe here. So quite a few things to get everything running, but you'll probably have uh, some of these programs already. Okay, so we're going to go to the folder where we have this zip, and we're going to shift right click, go to 7-zip, and then we're going to extract to uh, this folder. Okay, now that that has given us this folder, there's a mingw folder inside of it. What we're going to do is we're going to put this mingw folder inside of our C drive. So I'm just going to actually open up a new thing here. We're going to go to this PC, C drive, and we're just going to move it into there. Now you'll notice that there are a couple of folders in here. There's a, there's a lib in here, and then there's an x64, 8664 lib in here. Um, I just copy stuff into both. You probably only need to do one. That's okay. Either way, it works. So now we're going to go all the way back to SDL here. Oh, we've already downloaded uh, what we needed from SDL, right? So let's go to the SDL folder we downloaded. And it's this mingw folder. If you open that up, open it up here. Now there's a couple of things uh, we need. We need to go inside of this folder and you'll see that all this stuff is here. So actually we can just copy this folder over into the mingw64 folder and it's just going to merge with the folder that's already here. And that gives us all that we need for this guy. Now if you have any problems you can go in here and copy uh, or sorry you can go into here and you can copy the include and the lib into the parent folder, which really it won't hurt to put it there too, so I'll just put it in there just for posterity. And now we have all the SDL stuff in here. So if we look inside of include, we'll see SDL2. And uh, more importantly, inside of the subfolder here, the x86, x64 uh, set, we'll see SDL2 in there. And if we go to lib, we'll see um, SDL lib SDL2 is inside of here. So those lib SDL2s are all set up um, inside of our mingw. Now we need our binary folder. So inside of mingw, um, there's a GCC in here. Uh, I don't know if there's one in here. No, there's not. So 
instead of this mingw, we need to add this to our path. So if you hit the Windows key and type in path, you should see edit system environment variables. Go to edit variables, go here to your path, and we want to add a new path. And that's going to be inside of your C drive uh, mingw bin. So you're going to have C drive mingw64 bin. And those guys are now all set up. Now, just to be sure that everything is good to go, I changed my path, so I'm going to close Visual Studio Code and reopen it. So now I've got that set up here. Also, it's going to go through and set up, uh, it's do, doing this kind of setup process, uh, and it may detect my SDL. We'll see. Okay, I had to kill Visual Studio Code and uh, reopen it because it was tripping. Once I reopened it, it it loaded faster. So um, here now you can see I can do SDL dot and then we'll have a whole bunch of stuff in here that we can now access. Um, and you'll notice that the, the red squigglies are gone on this stuff. Um, so we're just going to create a window and do an infinite loop. So I'm just going to say uh, for true there's my infinite loop and I'm going to create a window here. Um, so call it win is equal to or win er is equal to stl dot uh, window create window and this is going to be the title of the window go win go stl window you name it whatever you'd like um, this is going to be the x position and the y position I believe uh, for where the window is on the screen we don't care where it's at um, I'm going to do these on new lines just because I have little space and also I'm going to make this text much bigger because it is tiny preferences uh, let's make it like 24 let's really make this stuff visible there we go gigantic okay sorry about that being a little too tiny initially hopefully um, it didn't bother you too much so SDL dot win uh, window pause undefined and we're just going to uh, do that again, SDL window pause undefined. So now we're going to set up the width and height. I'm just going to make this 800. All right, let's make it like a 1280 by 720. And then the flags are going to be, this is where you put, for example, in mine, in my sample I have over here for my engine, um, I have Vulcan in here, but we'll do SDL dot uh, window shown. Um, oops, window event show, no, SDL window shown, that's the one I want. Uh, and we're going to pipe it, so this is the same OR operator you do in C, C++, SDL dot window resizable. And if you were working with Vulkan, you can add in SDL dot um, window Vulkan in here. We are not in this case, so... To show how Vulcan would work would take quite a bit of time. Um, so now we could just say if there was an error, we're going to panic. Um, if error is not equal to null, null, then panic failed to create the SDL window. And then if it's not, we're just going to while true. And I guess that means that uh, we need to close the window and it, this, so that this variable, variable doesn't trip out. We'll do a destroy there at the bottom. I want to delete all these empty lines. I don't actually put empty lines in my code very often. Um, so, and also it fits all in one screen. So now we can do our build events, or our build script. Uh, um, it should be go build and then the output file. I'm going to make a folder here called bin. That's where we're going to put it. Um, bin slash uh, go window.exe and we're going to do main.go here. Now this build is going to take a minute because it's got to go and build SDL and all of that. And we're going to see any errors we have, like if it can't find SDL or something like that. If it couldn't find it, I'm pretty sure it would have already complained. Um, I don't know how to make this text any bigger. I'm sorry. Um, it is what it is. So we'll come back when it has either its errors or its success. Okay, that took a considerable amount of time instead of this window sandbox. It does take time, you just have to wait it out. 
you can see that it's done here. Now, one of the, I'm actually going to go into the folder, um, uh, open, reveal a file explorer. Now, one of the things that I noticed is if you try to run this, it may not work because it needs the SDL DLLs. But in this case, it does work. It works fine for me. It should work for you. Um, although it's not responding, and that's probably because something to do with, oh, because we have an infinite while loop. So there's our window. It's popped up, and we can start rendering stuff in it. Now, if you do have trouble, for some reason, you you go, I'm just going to first kill this. If you, do, if you have trouble and you double click on this and it does not open you need to go get the SDL DLL or any of the DLLs of the window that it set that there's error window a windows error window that pops up it'll tell you which DLLs you need to get you uh, as you may have noticed you're not really going to find them inside of uh, the files that we downloaded from SDL um, if you if we go into MinGW and we go to lib, um, you'll notice that there's no DLLs here. There's like a DLL dot a, but that's not the one we're talking about. And this is a, this should be a static library, but we'll we'll just fix the error for now. If you do have that issue, just go back to the SDL download page, download the regular SDL development uh, libraries, and just copy the DLL from that and paste it into the folder. Uh, into the executable folder but there we go this is set up here um, and as a bonus I will show you how to set up uh, VS code for um, building and running this uh, I'll give you a launch JSON here so if you go in and create a uh, dot VS code folder and then a launch launch.json and just put this code in there. Um, launch package type is go launch auto use the workspace. Um, you don't need this tags, but if you are using tags in Go, you can uh, add the tags in like this. And this is useful for um, build separation. Um, in in C or C plus plus, you can use preprocessors to strip out code. In Go, you can likewise build only specific files. Um, and you can use tags in order to accommodate that. So uh, I'll leave this in here, even though it's not going to really do anything for you now. And then if you save that guy, you should be able to press F5 and uh, debug this project. But it will take you, um, also install the plugin that it needs. It will take the same amount of time to build because it builds a separate executable. It doesn't use the one that we just built. So... Um, it does take the same considerable amount of time uh, to actually run that. So we're going to allow access for it to attach to that, and we'll see if it pops up. Okay, I finally finished, and here we are hitting breakpoints, and we can see we can step through here. Um, as a bonus bonus, we are going to make this infinite loop uh, actually use the poll events just to have a uh, complete sample here. So quit is equal to false uh, for not quit. And then we will do for E is equal to SDL dot poll event. And then E is not equal to nil. E equals SDL dot poll event. So this is just going to do a double poll here. <coughs> this is basically, it's going to, get the initial poll and then run through the loop and if it's not nil it's going to poll again until it's nil so it's just going to keep polling here until it's nil so if e dot get type is equal to sdl quit then we are going to say quit equal true um, so uh, another thing just to note as a bonus 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 is that you can do switch um, e dot type here just like you would in the regular go isms and so we can say e is equal to uh, e type and then we can do stuff like uh, case sdl dot keyboard event and then 
E is now a keyboard event, so I don't know, we, I think we can print this. Um, so there we go. Uh, is this not, and then, no, okay, it just needed to clean itself up. So now uh, the next time we build, it'll be faster. That really slow first build is because of SDL. So now it's gonna kind of just build and go pretty much immediately, a little bit slow inside of the sandbox, but it should be roughly immediately. So there we go. And then we can put a break. Oh, we don't need to put a break there because we are doing a print. So if I go over to my window that popped up, I now can move it around, can type stuff. You can see it's getting printed out here and then I can close it. So there we go. Full tutorial of SDL and Go. Have fun. Um, if you want some more tutorials on game programming and Go, um, I'll be happy to do it. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun with Go right now and I think it's a wonderful systems language. It's I love C. C is my core fundamental language that I love and Go is kind of the next step uh, you know it was created by the same guy who worked on C and Unix so it's it's fantastic um, next step to it I love it um, I'm gonna be posting this video also inside of the Twitter community if you want to kind of go there and talk about game development stuff so see you there and thanks for watching bye for now